Hey everyone, welcome back to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we are covering the Angular lifecycle and all of the different hooks that you can use in your apps. If you enjoy this video and you learn a thing or two, make sure you subscribe to our channel and like the video. Maybe leave us a comment down below, uh, letting us know what we can do differently or better. And also maybe check out our blog, which is at smallbatchdevs.com. Without any further ado, let's jump into it. So tell us a little bit about the Angular lifecycle hooks. Sure, so each Angular component and directive and service has a couple of different lifecycle hooks that get initialized as the component is started up and runs and is then destroyed. So basically the lifecycle starts when the component is initialized in the DOM and ends when the component is destroyed in the DOM. Angular has several lifecycle hooks that we're about to cover in order. So why would we use Angular's lifecycle hooks? So you want to know the Angular lifecycle because it comes into play whenever you start creating inputs and outputs on your components. Something to keep in mind is that when you're using uh, these lifecycle hooks, that input and output variables will become available during certain periods of the lifecycle of your component. Yeah, that's the main reason you're gonna want to pay attention to your lifecycle hooks, but on the side, it'll also help you reduce bugs and increase your app's performance when using these hooks correctly. So let's go ahead and jump into the code examples for our lifecycle hooks. You'll see here that we are implementing a bunch of interfaces and these all come from the Angular core library. And these are all the interfaces for our lifecycle hooks. And odds are you probably won't need all of them in every single component, just one or two. And just another quick note is we have uh, an array of strings for our logs and we have a input that will track our count. Yeah, and these logs are used to show, be shown on screen instead of the console logs in the dev tools. And the input you see there, the count, is just to trigger one of the lifecycle hooks called ng on changes. So the first lifecycle hook is pretty standard. It's the constructor. And you're going to be using your dependency injection here for all of your services. But more importantly, it is the first hook that runs when a component is initialized. And there's a couple arguments that say you shouldn't put a lot of logic in your constructor, but that's a little bit more in depth and for another video. The next lifecycle hook we're gonna look at is ng on changes. And this lifecycle hook gets triggered anytime a data bound input property gets changed in your component. When this method gets run, you will receive a parameter that you can use to look at the previous value and the current value of whatever input on your component has changed. And you can see we're taking advantage of that in our code here. We're just console logging the previous value as well as the current value. One important note with this lifecycle hook is that it gets called very frequently. So you don't wanna have any heavy logic in this uh, lifecycle hook or else that will affect your app's performance. So the next lifecycle hook is the ng on init. And odds are you'll be dealing with this most of the time when developing your application. So this will get run once after the previous hook that we covered, which is the ng on change. And this just gets called once when the component is first initialized. The next lifecycle hook we're gonna look at is the ng do check. And this lifecycle hook is important when you're trying to implement your own change detection. This lifecycle hook in particular will get triggered. So Angular recommends not implementing ng on changes and ng do check at the same time in the same component if you're monitoring the same input property. So for us, the input property is count. So if count were to change, both the ng on change and ng do check could fire and execute a lot of heavy logic. So Angular recommends you use one or the other when monitoring the same property. The last point we want to make here for ng do check is that it's called after ng on changes uh, for every change detection that is made. But it's also called immediately after ng on init, um, but that's obviously just on the first run. So we definitely wanna avoid heavy logic here. So the next lifecycle hook is the ng after content init. This is invoked after Angular performs any content projection into the current component's view. 
Content projection is a way of importing HTML from outside the component and inserting it into the template for your component. This is mainly used if you're using the ng content HTML tag or if you're using the content child uh, property on a variable in your code. This lifecycle hook is called once after the first ng do check. The next lifecycle hook is the ng after content checked. And this runs after Angular checks the content that's projected into the current component. This lifecycle hook is called after ng after content init and every subsequent ng do check. So you're going to want to avoid putting some heavy logic in this lifecycle hook as well. The next lifecycle hook is the ng after view init lifecycle hook. And this runs after Angular initializes the view and the child views. This is the first time you'll have access to the view child properties um, of the component. This lifecycle hook is called once after the ng after content checked. So we're almost through all of the lifecycle hooks. Uh, we have two more left. And the next one is the ng after view checked lifecycle hook. And this runs after Angular checks the component's views and the child views. This lifecycle hook is called after ng after view init and each subsequent ng after content checked. And once again, this is another lifecycle hook that we don't want to uh, have any heavy logic um, within. So the last lifecycle hook is ng on destroy, and this is known as the cleanup lifecycle hook, and it is called when the component is destroyed from the HTML DOM. This lifecycle hook is a great place to unsubscribe from your observables as well as detach from any event handlers that you may have in your component. It is finally demo time, my fellow developers. Um, we are in our Firefox browser and we ran ng-serve um, just on our example code that we showed to you. Um, anyways, we have a button here for start lifecycle and we have another one for our increment counter. So we're going to get started with starting our lifecycle and we'll see what happens. Boom. A lot of stuff just happened. A lot of stuff just happened. We, are, you can see that we went through a lot of our lifecycle hooks. Um, you can see our current count is one. Um, and as we mentioned, some of these lifecycle hooks only come into play once uh, we make changes to our input variables. Um, so if we increment our counter real quick, boom, we have some more uh, lifecycle hooks being hooked, I guess. <laughs> that works. That works. Um, Quite a few, too. So as you can see, there's one lifecycle hook that hasn't popped up yet, and that is the ng on destroy. And that's actually why we have these console logs over here on the right, is because we have to actually destroy the component that is posting these logs to the screen in order to trigger the ng on destroy. So let's go ahead and do that. By hitting the end lifecycle button. Basically what's happening is the component that is showing all these logs on the screen is controlled by an ng if in a higher component or a parent component. And so when we turn that ng if to false, it will destroy the component. There we go. There we go. Ng we on destroy. That component. Oh, talking over each other. It's all good. It's not good. So today we went over the Angular lifecycle hooks and gave a quick example of each lifecycle hook that you could possibly use in your Angular application. And just so you know, we do upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And be sure to check out our super sweet blog at smallbatchdevs.com where we implement a lot of these video tutorials in a written format. As always, thank you very much for watching this video. We hope you learned something and enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell, and check us out on uh, social media, whatever that is. Uh, I think we have a Facebook, maybe an Instagram, maybe a Twitter, I don't know. Just check us out, wherever. You'll figure it out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace. All right, so the... I'm just, <laughs> just kidding.